Our next speaker is Rita Jokerst, and the title is A Farmer's Hidden Life. Rita is an organic farm manager at Garden Sweet, growing fruits, veggies, herbs, and flowers for CSA members, local chefs, and the Fort Collins community. Rita has a permanent blanket fort in her basement. Welcome, Rita. So I'm here today to talk to you about farming as a profession, as a career, as a lifestyle, and as a public service. I want to talk about some of the misconceptions around farming and what you can do as part of this community that can change the lives of farmers across the country. So why am I talking about it? Because I grew up on a cow-calf operation in Missouri. I got my bachelor's in agricultural sciences, and I work as an organic farm manager here in Fort Collins. And so, <laughs> and so why do I need to be talking about farming? Because farms are disappearing, and farmers are disappearing without replacements following. The average age of the American farmer is 58.3 years and rising, and only 10% of farmers are under the age of, of 35. And many young people who want to get into the profession can't because of their high student loan debts. And so why does that matter? No farmers means no food. I'm sure some of you have seen that bumper sticker, but it's true. You need a farmer three times a day, every single day. And finally, I want to talk about farming because there are these huge disconnects that exist between the perception and the reality of what a farmer does, how a farmer lives, and what kind of production practices are appropriate. And these kind of disconnects are what keep farmers' social status and appeal and income level out of the 21st century. But as farmers, sometimes we play into that because that's what gets consumer support. So the first one of these disconnects is this quaintness factor. And it applies to how we present our goods, what kind of tools we end up showing to the consumer, and how we look. So we don't actually harvest in wicker baskets that are overflowing with produce. And I don't always wear overalls and plaid shirts. But, but sometimes whenever I'm playing up the whole Farmer Jane thing to get consumer support, that's what I put on, because that's what I get from consumers. And so sometimes, Consumers don't want to see that I'm using an iPad with a point-of-sale system on it. Instead, to many of them, they'd rather see me scratching in the dirt with my pitchfork. The next disconnect is this job romanticism from outsiders. This is people who have this false envy of the good life. Because to many people, growing food crops is actually just gardening. And so they say things to me like, oh, you get to work outside, you get a tan, and exercise, and those winters off. Gosh, I wish I could be a farmer. That must be so nice. What a noble profession. And if I don't respond in kind or express any amount of discontent, I get the reaction of, well, at least you love what you do, which is infuriating. Because I do love my job. My passion is growing food for people. But I don't believe that love of job and a sustaining wage are mutually exclusive. <laughs> a photographer who has a great session with a client just still deserves to be paid for the time and those photographs. And a software engineer who really liked working on that piece of code still deserves to be appropriately compensated. And so do farmers. Which brings me to the next disconnect, how farms actually sustain themselves. 90% of farms don't actually sustain themselves by farming. They usually rely on an outside source of income. The first is an independent form of wealth. So these are people who have inherited a hunk of money or they have made their fortune in a previous career. And so they have hobby farms that never make any money, but they keep throwing money back into it. The second are farmers who have partners who have off-farm jobs that do make a living wage and are able to funnel that money back in. And the third are farmers who have second or third jobs. They do demo work, they truck drive, they donate plasma, they do things like this woman I had the pleasure of farming with who sold her panties online during the off-season to keep cash flow going. So what can you do? All right, you're part of the community. You can get to know a farmer, and not just the idea of a farmer, but actually get to know a farmer. And put them in your back pocket as a professional that you know. The way that you have a hairstylist or a dentist, have yourself a farmer. And the easiest way to do this is to join a CSA. Some people, some people call these farm shares. Fruits, vegetables, animal products, whatever you're looking for, there's a CSA in this community that can fulfill your needs. The next thing you can do is go out to those farmers' farm stands. There are a number of farm stands close to or in city limits that are open five, six, seven days a week. Go out there, see the operation, 
meet the farmer and get the freshest produce you possibly can. Or if you're a little bit of a commitment phobe, you can come to the farmer's markets. There are four farmer's markets um, through the course of the year in Fort Collins. Come out and support a bunch of different producers. And the last thing you can do is get out your phone right now and take a picture of the next slide. This is an address that I want you to email. Email them, demand the inclusion of young farmers in the student loan debt forgiveness program as part of, as part of the Higher Education Act reauthorization because farming is a public service because without us, you don't eat. Thank you. Thank you.